Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Power Rangers Beast Morphers episodes 5 and 6. So without further ado, let's hop right into episode 5. Devin's father, the, the mayor, he gets him a job at this car wash place. And Devin is obviously kind of not happy about this because that'll mean that he won't have time for being a ranger. But you know, he doesn't want to disappoint his dad, so he takes the job. Which, um, the first problem from this arises when he is late to a meeting with, um with the general of Grid Battle Force, who is Ben and Betty's father, uh, which basically, they make a joke how that explains how they haven't been fired yet. And, um, yeah, so he shows up with his, uh, best Mario cosplay, explains that, you know, he's been working, so he's gonna be late to some stuff. He's also late to a battle with Ravi and Zoe, because they're, they're fighting Blaze. Uh, so he's just late, and he's late to all this stuff because he's working, and his boss is getting on him. So the other rangers come to the car wash and they help him wash cars, as you would at a car wash. However, while they're doing that, monster for this episode, like which is like a slicey monster, um, slices their phones so and their uh, communicators so they don't get the call. And it's a, it's at this point when I realized the problem with this show, because so the the commander shows up and they're like. The monster stole 300 tons of Morphex. Um, so why didn't you answer your phones? And it's because, you know, their phones were destroyed, obviously. And Devin leaves this, his job, and which leads to him getting fired. Because he's like, if you leave again, I'm going to fire you. Which is like, it, that would never happen. If you had the mayor's son working for you, you would never fire him. Because you would be terrified that they'd, like, build a parking lot over your business or something. Now, the problem I realized... Is that the monsters need more facts to like create monsters and like make giga drones and for uh, Roxy and Blaze to even morph. So for there to be any conflict in this show, the Rangers have to continuously suck at their jobs. Did anyone else notice that? Where it's like if they just did their job of protecting the Morph X, the villains would be completely powerless. I don't know, but I thought that was funny. So they go. And they fight off the guy, and um, Devin uses his Zord, because they uh, introduced a concept early on that they can repurpose Evox's stuff to be, like, examined and such for them to make weapons out of. But because they blow it up when they defeat it, it's all useless. So Devin manages to, like, stab it in such a way where it's it doesn't blow up, and they can retrieve it, and they can study it. So they bring it back to Grid Battle Force, and Devin calls his dad because I, I, what I forgot to mention actually is his dad gets kind of caught in the middle of a fight later on in the episode. And Devin calls him at the end to be like, hey, how are you? And he's like, oh, I'm fine. But, you know, I'm just, you know, hate my son because you left the car wash, which I got to say, they try and do this thing where like he, he tells him, like, you know, I'm so disappointed in you, son. And then he goes on TV and he talks about the Power Rangers and the other Rangers are like, See, Devin, he does love you. But it's like, no. <laughs> that is not okay. Him talking about his son's alter ego favorably does not excuse the fact that he just, like, talked out his son. Like, I don't know. That that, that felt weird to me. But overall, this episode, I liked it. Um, I liked the, um, the best part was definitely the stuff with Devin and his father. Uh, I, that, that's been the, a highlight of the show for me so far. Uh, all the Rangers do great, although apparently those weaknesses are still there because at the end uh, of one of the fights, Ravi is like, oh man, you know, I um I almost overheated and Zoe's like munching on her carrots. It's like, no, those suck. Stop it. Yeah, so overall this was a good episode. And um, I knew we had to get a Devin-centric episode Next, because the last two were very centric on, um, episode three was very Zoe-centric, and episode, um, four was very, uh, Robbie-centric, so Devin was due for one. But yeah, so overall, uh, I really like this episode. It's really cool. Uh, episode six begins, Nate's looking at the stuff, he, uh, gives Devin kind of a pat on the back for getting the Giga Drone, and then Devin and the other Rangers and Ben and Betty, they all go to, um, launch off some model rockets, and... What I thought was really cool was when Ravi launches his off, he says, uh, Nasada, here I come. 
which for those of you who don't know, NASADA is basically the Power Rangers equivalent of NASA. You know, they've had a big part in, um, they had a big part in a lot of the earlier seasons. They, uh, were in Forever Red and a lot more. And I just really appreciate that. I really appreciate the more subtle references, Ranger history, because I feel like in the past, we've either had things where it's like mind numbingly, like, how are you this oblivious to something that happened like a year ago? Or we have like beating you over the head, like Megaforce style of stuff. Uh, this I feel is a nice happy medium. I don't know, where, like, they mention the old villains, and they mention Nasada, and I, I don't know, I think that's cool. Devin's rock, it doesn't work, and, um, Ravi actually warned him about that prior to it, he said that the fins were in the wrong place, and Devin doesn't listen to him, and he gets a bit irritated by Ravi, um, telling him that it was all his fault, um, which carries over later to when they're doing a, a simulator for the Zords, Ravi gives him, his, him some advice, and Devin's like, nah, nah, I got this, man. And, um, I, I thought this was interesting, because, like, you, you can see, I, or at least I can, I can understand a person being like, um, you know, no, no, our failure was not my fault, I did everything right, you guys just didn't listen to me, um, or it's like some people might say, well, that's not very good, like, leadership qualities, but I say, you know, that's, that's human qualities, though, and also, you could probably say that a lot of what happened with his dad in the last episode is probably getting to him. Um, they don't outright say that, but you could probably interpret it. So, the villains of, uh, you know, Blaze and Roxy and Scrottle? Scro- Scrozzle. Scrozzle. I finally got- I wrote it down this time, so I remember it. They're getting yelled at by Evox, because Evox is like, they have my drone. If they get into that, they can get our data, and then we're screwed. So, Roxy's like, don't worry, I, I got this. So, they- they, her and Meltatron, or whatever it's called, go to the Zord hangar, and they break in, and then the rangers come, and then they seal the rangers in, and it's, it's interesting, Scrozzle comes, and he steals a bunch of stuff, and he steals, like, a, a robot head or something, but to me, and I don't know, may, maybe this is just wishful thinking, it definitely looks like he's got the stuff to create an evil ranger. Granted, I mean, they already have two evil rangers, but they, the, we know we got a gold ranger and a silver ranger coming, so... I don't know, maybe this would be the gold one? Because, I mean... I, the silver one has to be Nate, right? I mean, his name is Nate Silva. So Devin gets... actually escapes before they're sealed into the room. So he uses his zord and, like, a robot and melts the doors. And, um... We finally get the Megazord for the season, and it looks alright, I guess. It looks fine. Um, I will say, I don't really like the fact that they're in different cockpits. I've never liked that. Whenever they're in different cockpits, when they form the Megazord, I think when they form the Megazord, they should all be in the same thing. I don't know, I've just always preferred that. So the villains talk, and Scrozzle is like, Oh, Evox, I'm, I'm making that thing you we were talking about. So probably an evil ranger. And Devin learns a lesson about friendship and magic and whatever. And, uh, all, all is well in the universe. Yeah, so overall, these episodes, these episodes were good. Um, I'll say I, I preferred these ones to, um, the last, the ones I reviewed in the last video. Um, I really liked episode four. Episode four was good. Episode three was, just felt like basic Power Rangers tree huggy stuff, I guess, which is fine. I mean, you know, um, that's what I've come to expect. But th this was good. I liked these episodes, um, quite a bit. You know, the stuff with Devin and his dad was really cool. Um, the fact that they're setting up for future rangers, and we see Devin kind of come into his own as a leader, that's really cool. But yeah, so, um, if you haven't seen these episodes, uh, give them a watch, give this whole show a watch, it's been pretty good so far. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, make sure to leave a like, consider subscribing if you enjoyed, and come back soon, because, um, soon, uh, hopefully soon, I'm going to be having a video talking about Common Rider O's, because I just finished that show. So, um, if you're watching this and you've seen that, or you think it looks cool, then uh, make sure to uh, come back and give that a watch because I just, the show is so good I had to talk about it. So um, be on the lookout for that, be on the lookout for a bunch of the other stuff I got coming up on this channel. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.